Hello folks, it's David Connolly here, the web developer extraordinaire. I wanted to do a super quick video in response to the Vim craze that's happening right now. Now this YouTuber came on my radar and he uses Vim. I believe he goes by the name The Primogen, have I got that right? Something like that. And he's been doing Vim tutorials and he is as astonishingly fast, you know. Now in case people don't know, Vim is about the most bare bones text editor that you'll ever find. It looks a little bit like uh, this. I mean, it, it really does just look like the command line interface. It's so simple. And when you see the hardcore users of this thing, they don't use the mouse. So it's all about maximum speed and efficiency. Often when you hear somebody say, yeah, I use Vim, it's tempting to laugh, but really and truly, uh, they are the ones who are laughing. Because the truth of the matter is that this is incredibly fast, and I would encourage you to check that video out. Uh, Vim Tutor World Record Speedrun No Glitch. It's astonishingly fast. Now, the people who are into Vim, there's a few things that I've noticed. One is that... All of them admit that there's a steep learning curve to learning Vim. That's no secret. And in fact, uh, some of them say that you'll go slower before you go faster. Because there's a whole bunch of shortcuts that you have to learn to become good at this thing, you know. Um, but the other thing that I've noticed is that they all swear by it. They all love it and they do seem to be incredibly fast. So I spent a few days really, really thinking about this, and I was asking myself, do I want to learn this thing, you know? And eventually, today I made a phone call with a, not only a Vim developer, also a developer who uses Vim, I wanted that side of the story, but I also checked in with my friend uh, Derek, who has been a developer for, for about 20 years, for about the same length of time as this guy. And... Derek uses a very powerful IDE by the name of PHP Storm. It's about the most fancy thing that you can get, so it's really at the opposite end of the spectrum. But I know that he knows what Vim is. So I wanted to hear both sides of the argument, do a little bit of honest research, and then make my own conclusion. So that's what I'm giving you here. And... Uh, you can uh, possibly tell from the title, I haven't decided the title yet, but I'm saying no uh, to Vim. That's basically the spoiler alert. So, what happened is, when I looked at the guy here, and it's astonishingly fast, I mean, this is much faster than anything I could do for sure. Uh, very, very impressive. And when I spoke to my friend Derek, I was like, I've been looking at Vim. I could hardly get a sentence out. Derek was like, oh, those guys are ninjas, you know. So we have a lot of respect for the Vim users. And uh, woe to ye who would write this stuff off. These people are incredibly fast at this, incredibly skilled. And it really is a skill in its own right. But I had noticed a couple of things that concerned me. And... I spoke with my friend Derek about them. I mean, I'm not using either Vim nor am I using PHP Storm. These days I use Sublime, which looks like this. And I've been learning a wee bit of C++, so I use this thing. So I'm kind of in between the two, do you know what I mean? But in any event, one of the things that bothered me about the Vim stuff that I was watching was that they don't seem to have folder navigation on the left hand side like we've got here. And I figured, okay, so whilst this is fast for editing single files, there's a lot of value to being able to click into a folder and, you know, see what's there and right click and create new folders and all of that stuff. Plus, quite frankly, a lot of people are fast with a mouse. You know, it's no big deal. Uh, so there was that. Anyway, the upshot of it is, and I can tell you that this is unanimous with both myself and Derek, we both agree that this guy would whoop our asses on a one-to-one -one if we're talking about editing single files. However, 
on a full project? Um, well, I'm not too sure, but Derek is confident that he would probably be faster than the guy on a full project. I'll keep myself out of it, in fact. He reckons he would be faster on a full project, and I believe him. And the reason why I think Derek would be faster on a full project is because with PHP Storm, he has got Git integration. He can um, look at, for example, a little function being called and then click a button and go straight to the class. It will even open up another file if need be. He can look up definitions and all sorts really, really quickly. So for single file editing, this Vim stuff, this is awesome, awesome, awesome. But for a full project with all of the nuances that that might have, he reckons that the, the the IDEs are the way to go, and I'm just the messenger here. Now, there are Vim users cur currently screaming at the screen, and they're saying, well, hang on, you can get a plug-in for this, a plug-in for that, and a plug-in for that. So, let me tell you about my conversation with the Vim expert today, and I'll tell you how that went. So, when I phoned up, the Vim guy who was in Belgium, we spoke about some of these things and immediately he almost sounded the same as this guy. He says, steep learning curve, but it's really, really fast, worth doing, you'll never look back, Vim is awesome, etc, etc. I said, okay, I'm sold, but what about folder, this is a terrible example, but what about these folder navigation things here on the left, how does that all work? And the guy said, well, there's a plug-in for that. And I realised almost immediately that no matter what feature I was going to ask about, the answer was clear. There's a plug-in. So whatever it is that you'd like Vim to have, you know, folding method things or syntax highlighting or whatever it may be, even autocomplete, let's all say it together, there is a plug-in for that. So there you go. And you might think that this is a touchdown for Vim. And for a minute, I thought it was as well. I really did. But then, suddenly I started to realise a couple of things when I really thought about this. The Vim guy was honest enough to tell me, and I thought this was really cool that he pretty much said this. He said that one of the problems that he has had with Vim is that when he returns to any other text editor, even Notepad or something, he says he runs into problems because he's always hitting escape and, you know, um, colon cues and all sorts of crazy stuff because he's so locked in to Vim. And I figured, well, that's an interesting thing there. But then I thought to myself, well, hold on a minute. I've got a couple of problems with this plug-in thing. First of all, when you start using third-party libraries, I mean, that's what a plugin is, and I am not into third-party dependencies. You're inheriting someone else's rewrite schedule, someone else's problems, uh, someone else's philosophies and everything. It, it doesn't sit good with me. But moreover, one of the main arguments for going with Vim, and I think it's a persuasive argument, is that you're more in touch with the computer. It's like you're using the command line for everything. And when you do all of that heavy duty server stuff, you're going to feel right at home. Great. I like the argument. I'm clapping, right? But the trouble is, if you're using a version of Vim that is loaded with tons and tons of plugins and tons and tons of crap, at that point, it's not really Vim. It's something else, and it's something that's extremely esoteric. So you could log on to that server and go, here we go, Charlie, and the thing that you get if you're using, let's say, a server's version of Vim, it might be nothing like what you're using day to day. The bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, whilst I have enormous respect for anybody who learns this stuff, and I really do, and I haven't closed the book on Vim, Maybe I could be persuaded, but at this point in time, I think it would be a bad idea to learn something that you're effectively going to be locked into and that's going to need a whole bunch of crappy plugins to make it do what you want to do. I don't think that's healthy. I think it's healthier to just use what feels good 
and in fact even healthier still to try and use a variety of different things. I've been looking at Notepad++ lately. I don't need it or anything, but sometimes I think it's nice to just try other things. So for me personally, I'm saying no to Vim, but best of luck to anyone who's saying yes.